really know how to launch into this, and I didn't warn anyone on the panel, but I want to. I, we're not a political show. We get a little political once in a while, um, but it's 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 about no no. What you have you seen any of those shows I've ever? But anyway, once yes, you. <laughs> um, but but I I I don't think we can really do a show without at least mentioning what's going on and. Um, and everybody knows. So I, all I want to say is that black lives do matter and that you need to do what you can to support um, whatever's going on in your community. Uh, I, I had a wonderful little feel good moment and it wasn't because I did something amazing. That That's not it at all. Uh, driving back from the bank today with my wife, there's two young girls uh, and I live near a high school. So normally at that time of day, there's tons of, but no high school, obviously. So they were just walking and I noticed they're holding signs and they're standing on the corner and they're holding signs that say black lives matter. And I honked and I waved and they smiled and they jumped and stuff. And it was like, you know, just connecting with somebody else on a good note, um, is a good thing. And I'm going to, if you guys have messages or something great, if not, we'll move on. I think we're all just appalled at what's what's happening around the country. It's a difficult time for everybody, and it's uh, it's you know we're we're kind of godsmacked. Like it's 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 an amazing thing that's going on. Uh, a lot of us didn't know it was going to get this intense, <clears throat> but uh, it's gotten intense quickly. And I just hope uh, that everyone's safe out there. Yeah. So we yeah. had someone in my circles try and uh, minimize it all and say, haven't we done enough? The answer is no. If uh, if somebody asks you, hey, if you woke up black tomorrow, what would you feel? And if the answer is not indifference, like it makes no, no, no difference to me, then then like if, if, if it's not indifferent, then that means we haven't done enough. Because that means there's no equality if you don't want to wake up black. Or like if you have a problem waking up black, I should say. I mean... I'm going to quote Chris Rock here. You don't want to be me and black, and I'm rich. That's yeah, exactly. Okay, that is the <laughs> truth. All right? I get all this melanin that keeps me youthful. Unfortunately, I get all this stress that's going to kill me <laughs> looking like a 20-year-old. What can I say? <laughs> um, and a serious note, this is a bad thing is a really terrible thing it looks like the bad old days and if you don't know your history you don't understand what i'm talking about and i do suggest you start learning about it because if i can know my american history in full to the point where i can talk about chinese cities that were destroyed uh, you know during race riots and that's a really stupidly wrong term because it wasn't the chinese having a riot and it wasn't the black people having a riot that destroyed uh you know the cities in oklahoma um, you need to learn your history. We don't have to go back there. That's going to take focus. It's going to take some lives. I'm very upfront with that about people. But always remember that civil rights fighters did understand that they were risking their life for what they wanted to achieve, and they may not actually be alive to see it. That's the kind of dedication and focus it takes, and that's the facts. It's not going to be easy. It doesn't require sloganeering. And I will also point out that just being on the streets is not the full story. <laughs> you must be prepared to vote, and that's that. that. And not just vote for president, because a president is not a dictator. And even though certain factions... Except in some case, yeah. Certain factions in the U.S. would like to have it. That's because they want to have a dictator to impose their will on you. Um, this is a democracy. Vote for everything on the list. And I understand, yes, it's hard, it's complicated, you have to read about it. Y'all fucking know stacks about every goddamn car and every sports agent. Put some of that out of your head and read. That's all I gotta say. And then I'll add on to, uh, I'll say that just like you always say, you know, get involved in your local stuff. <laughs> Go to yeah. all the meetings. Uh, at least at least if you can't make it, inform yourself on what's going on and maybe get a proxy to go in for you. Because that's where all the real fuckery happens. It's just right there under your nose in your local place. And cops are controlled. Their contracts, their union well, contracts are controlled at the local level. Consent decrees do not affect things like 
how your cops operate, what equipment they are allowed to buy from the federal government. I can tell you this because I've worked in local government and I've gotten to watch decision making as a camera person for hours on end, try 8,000 hours of watching political meetings in a, on a local level, on the county and city level. You are more powerful than you think to affect things like the police contracts, how they conduct themselves, and their oversight. So please, never listen to anybody telling you your vote doesn't count and that you are powerless. That is designed to get you to opt out of participating and strangely enough, it doesn't accomplish anything you want to have done. Get involved on the local level more than you would on a national level. And I can guarantee you, you will then affect the national level bigger than you would have ever thought. Yeah, there were a couple of uh, allies that I really liked what they were doing at the um, at the community meetings when they were doing the reviews on like what happened this weekend. They're like, what happened? And then like some of these guys were being told, you know, sit down, shut up order order and he's like no no it was like not just one person but it was it was awesome they were they were like no this is what i see and you work for me you're you're the elected official listen to what i have to say and then i'll sit down also the um, la live stream of like i think it was eight to nine hours of them being berated yeah. on um, oh, that was must see video <laughs> it was cathartic and wonderful and i yes. do and your city council meetings are probably on zoom right now if you go to your city's website, you will be able to find the Zoom meeting, the password, and also the mechanisms to submit a public comment if you cannot view or attend, or to register to post your public comment. Do that if you really feel strongly about this issue and you want to affect change. I cannot, I've watched way too many wealthy people come in and kill things like good public housing and lower rates for the affordable housing you know so that a project that should have good affordable housing as part of the mix winds up with an affordable housing rate where the starting point for thirty five thousand dollars salary is a four hundred thousand dollar house and um it's because the voices that should be there are more likely to come out to save a tree from being cut down that's rotten than they are to show up for things like the budget meetings and affordable housing concerns. You don't have to sit through the whole meeting, but you can read a docket, submit a public comment and have that considered. And I really, but rich people will hire somebody who will sit through a six hour meeting to make a five minute public comment statement on an issue. Think about that you and your friends can group up and you can team tag each other to just sit in for a while. Oh, okay, I gotta go. You can come in and take my place and then submit a, cop a public comment statement. It really is that easy and that simple. You just have to organize. Some people can pay an or a person to organize and be there. They're getting paid $150 an hour to sit in the chair and submit that comment. You need to be as canny and as tenacious. And that's just the true facts. Don't let them silence you, because there are some cases where they'll pull some shenanigans to try and keep you from being mm -hmm. Absolutely. And how many times have we walked into the voting booth and we know the president, the senator, and the congressman that we want to vote for, and then the other eight-tenths of the ballot, we're like, eh, that's a nice name, and oh, this is nice, and oh, this is good. Judges. When you vote mm -hmm. for a judge and you don't know who the judge is. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah. That's one yeah, thing I like that, about mail-in voting is that uh, exactly, you got that, right? Mail-in voting? Yes, yeah, we have mail-in yeah. voting. And so you go through the pamphlet, and if you say, oh, I don't know this, you can go to your computer, look stuff up, and then just fill in the bubble when you've made your decision, an informed decision, instead of just, oh, I don't know, what party are they? Or what, uh, I don't know, that name looks good. That, yeah, it's really uh, nice. Can I throw out a couple of resources? Yeah. Of course. Okay, votesmart.org. Most of the time, if you have a ballot measure or an issue or a candidate that you can't find out about, and I as a voice actor, um, oftentimes when I see auditions, and I, especially political ones, I research the candidate. I don't want my voice used for somebody that I am completely diametrically opposed to. I would reject the money before I would take the job. That's just who I am. VoteSmart.org.
great way to find out about the ballot measure. And they speak in plain English. And also, League of Women Voters, nonpartisan. Both of them are nonpartisan. Um, how do you know something is partisan? I use this simple language test. That blue is the best blue that's ever been. The sky is the most gorgeous blue. It's this particular shade of blue that's gorgeous. That is a partisan statement. How is it nonpartisan? The sky is blue because of these particular effects in our atmosphere. One is my opinion on a color and what it is and the quality of it. One is the factual representation of representation of what happens. So those two are really strong people um, to learn about the issues in your area, the candidates on your ballot, and then also go to their websites. Many candidates do have it on their websites. And when you see an advertisement, there's a teeny weeny bitty bitty, like I can't read it, bit of type that we call, we call, paid for by. yeah, we call um, ant type when we, when I did marketing stuff and I had to put things down in like five or six point font. Um, and uh, that is often a good indicator of who's funding a measure or a ballot. Go to their website. If you cannot find who is funding a ballot measure, if you cannot find, if the candidate refuses to put party affili affiliation or a clear statement of what they're for, that's often a sign that they're probably not somebody you want to vote for because they are obscuring something. Yeah. Do you and with all that, you don't have to rely on your memory. Um, voting laws in the United States allows you to bring paperwork, print stuff out, mm -hmm. bring it in. You can, you could even access your phone in the ballot box while you're voting. Now, most people, that's you're a little late if you're doing your research at that point. So do your research before you go. Make some notes, whether it's handwritten or printed out. And you can access your ballot before you go to the box. You could fill it out at home, mm -hmm. take it there, and, and bring then it with fill you. out the official ballot. Yeah. That's usually what I yeah, do. Is I fill very out the, important. The, Get involved. The, do your homework. Yeah, I fill out the yeah. sample, and I go in and I fill the real one. Yeah, change requires involvement. The, it, it really cannot be left up to any particular person because I've watched, honestly, I've watched people who are very left to, like, the Greens level left, and they have to come to a compromise with the people, with the rest of the people that are actually sitting on a council and that make the laws. Laws in the U.S., no matter who you like, are made via compromise. And uh, the unfortunate truth is we often have a group of people who want to legislate who are in opposition to a group of people who frankly don't give a flying F about you and if they do their jobs at all, they collect the salary and so they can obstruct as much as they want. And that's the facts. We, I'd love to be dealing with Noam Chomsky as president and also all the Congress. But that is, I like to live in reality. Although, frankly, I'm thinking drugs and insanity sounds pretty good right now. Um, but reality is what we have to deal with if we want to change. And Martin Luther King led marches. He gave speeches. All of the all the greats of civil rights did a lot of physical boots on the ground, visual protests, so you could know that there was an issue. But at the end of the day, they went to Capitol Hill, they sat down with legislators, they lobbied for change, they went to presidents, they pushed and they talked and they fought with them for change, to get effective change. You cannot cut, you cannot have change without both of them combining into your Voltron force of social justice. And of course, voting. And you got to vote. You got to, it is a. I, I did behavior as a marketing person for three years. And one of the things that dawned on me was like a big to the brain. We've trained people to not feel like taking a, a more progressive view and taking risks to, is worth it. Because if it's not far enough, we retract our vote. And it's like we have a lot of people who often say, well, they didn't get Every, they didn't cut Monsanto out, and there's still GMOs that are allowed to be done in our food supply. So we're not, we're not going to vote next season, and it sounds so reasonable. 
And it's not because the honest to goodness truth is if the primary people who show up to vote are more conservative and less concerned about sustainability issues, less concerned about social justice, less concerned about everything you care about, then they naturally have to veer over it. So it's like when we train, my apologies to fellow humans, although you're not as good as dogs, but if you're trained dogs to, to be responsive to something that's very negative, which is things like force, and dogs start hiding the fact that they're scared of you and they're always in a, in a state of tension, dogs get more and more violent. That's why the we have a, a we have a problem with understanding the concept of alpha because we studied the alpha male syndrome in wolves that were in captive stress. But when we look at the alpha male of the wolf in nature, their design they are alpha because they're more nurturing, they do more for their communities and that's why they lead. So we we learned that as the more brute force we put on a dog, the more they're gonna look to us as a leader. That is absolutely wrong. It actually creates a dangerous powder keg in animal behavior. Well, when you step back from voting and you say you're not giving me 100% of what I want, um, then we teach the people that need our votes to stay in office, well, you're not consistent enough, you're not regular, I can't trust you to be there even when I give you, even if I manage to get you 25 because I duked it out with the people who would give you zero, you're not rewarding me for that. And so they have to start skewing more and more conservative if they want to stay in office and have even marginal change. There is a good reason why we no longer have people like FDR. And even FDR, I really need people to look at his full and complete record because much of the things you think F you know FDR gave America was excised from groups like black people, from women. We didn't get access to Social Security until years later. We had to fight to have access. It was a good and progressive program but people were excised from it. You must know your history to understand that incrementalism is actually the only reason we got all the way up to Obergefell and the, the marriage um, ruling for that gave us gay marriage as a constitutional right. And it, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing in the constitution, nothing on the books that is settled law. That is a very stupid misnomer that people think that because it has a precedent, it's been called settled law and it's in the books and we've had a lot of victories on it that it cannot be changed. All you need is a willing court, a willing Supreme Court and a person withstanding to challenge that ruling and you can have it overturned. Nothing is settled because that is what democracy is. And if you let enough people get power, whoop, there goes your rights, there goes settled law. That's how it works. Too bad. So sad. You're screwed. And on that happy note. <laughs> I'm a juror. <laughs> Get out there and be involved. That's all. You know, this yeah. is this is a show that that is probably best described as we're activists. We feel that there's there are certain good paths to go down and other paths that aren't as good. Um, and that's one of the things that makes us passionate, that makes us involved. The reason we do this without collecting any money is because we believe in it and we love it. Um, and we enjoy each other's company, obviously. But again, you don't, this, this, this issue may not be as fun as electric cars or as football or as anything else that you're interested in. But it's the most important thing you can deal with. So please. Outlawed electric cars because they felt Spend a couple of minutes and take care of that. Mm -hmm. I have. What did Georgia just say? It can happen. It really it can. can. Oh, it could. Yeah. We can make just things better. We one vote away. The enemy of the good. Mm -hmm.